everybody and welcome to the Crafty Poppet Crochet Podcast. This is episode 7. I am Asa Marie. I am coming to you from Lismore, New South Wales, Australia. And this podcast is where I share with you all of my crochet adventures and crafty fun, along with a ridiculous amount of crafty op shop finds. You may know them as thrift stores or charity shops where you're from. I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at The Crafty Poppet, and show notes for this episode will be in the description box below. Thank you everybody so much for continuing to watch and returning to watch my podcast. It means so, so much. I really appreciate it. So thank you very, very much indeed. I have got a lot of things to share with you. I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start, so much so that I just started recording this podcast like 50 times. This is the 51st time, I'm sure of it. It has to be. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on. I have got... I have got whips coming out of my ears. I have got one finished object. I have got... As promised in the introduction, <laughs> a glorious amount of stash acquisitions. I have got some shout outs. I have got some... I've got a big thank you to give someone. I have got some maker plans and uh, crochet alongs that I would like to talk about at the end. So, first of all, I think what I will do is get straight into it with... some whips. Now, where are they? It's down here. I'm surrounded by stuff. Okay, oh, that's the sesh position. <laughs> that's for the next episode as well. <laughs> because I'll give you a little clue. My last episode, in my last episode, I shared with you that I would be doing some, um, sharing some books that I bought throughout the month of January. And that has now extended into the month of February. So I will be sharing with you for my stash acquisitions all of my books. Um, so that's not really much of a little clue, is it? It's just like I told you. <laughs> um, okay, the first whip that I have started is actually a blanket. I have never done a pieced blanket before and I am doing the Sophie Loves Leela Bjorn blanket. Isn't it gorgeous? I really like all of the little squares on them. And so I am actually doing this for the show that will be, the North Coast National is the name of the show that happens in Lismore. It's the biggest show in the region and they have all sorts of competitions and I am going to be entering some crochet into that. So the first square, have I got it on there? No. That you have to do for that blanket is from the Circles of the Sun crochet along. I have no idea. I'm going to cover my face up, but I don't know if you can see that. I, oh yeah, I think you can. And so, um, it, it uses a lot of overlay crochet techniques. Um, the orange there, like the last circle bit that's a bit of an overlay one and the red one in the middle that's oh, more towards the middle that's overlay and so it's really pretty I like those colors but and I liked these colors that's probably what drew me to the um, pattern in the first place I decided to go ahead 
with this colour scheme and I do have to tuck in all of my ends for every square because I'm dreadful like that. Oh, and there's another end in the way, isn't that great? That is my colour scheme. And I love it. I absolutely love this colour scheme. I think it's just beautiful. Oh, it just makes me smile. I love it. I love how, so the, this sort of goldy, sandy brown, um, you do a couple of stitches and then it comes down into the row below to make that pattern happen. And then I really, this is just slip stitches along here, so I'm really enjoying that technique. And so I've done my three, so there's nine squares, nine different squares that you have to do for um, the, I don't know, it's a very long name, Sophie Loves Leela, I might just call it the Sophie Loves Leela Blanket, this, I'll just call it the Sophie Blanket. Um, so it uses nine squares of the circles in the sun crochet along and you have to do three of them so you have to do 27 little squares and then this is a mandala that is a paid pattern you have to print that one out and use that for the middle and then this lady has put together borders in the middle there and then borders on the outside as well and it's got tassels on and I'm really hoping that that will put me in good stead for winning that category. So I'm looking very forward to seeing this blanket grow and I've got, I'm giving myself seven months to do this big blanket so oh, hopefully that is enough time. I think it will be, it should be. But I've got to, I'm not allowing myself to continue on to a new set of squares until I have tucked in my ends from the previous ones. Um, we'll see how well that goes because I do procrastinate. I have been procrastinating a lot lately. And we'll see how that goes because potentially what I could do is a bit of self-sabotage and I could just push it and push it and just be like, no, I don't, I don't really want to do that so I'm not going to tuck the tails in. Um, so I'll just do something else. I hope I don't do that, I, because I have been sort of doing that with another work in progress that is now almost a finished object. Um, for other works in progress, what have I got? I have got, oh, I've been doing some sewing, I'm so excited. Um, I have been doing a pattern by... A company called, it's got it on the end of the, I bought it from the op shop and it's got it, it's by Sugar and Spice Textiles and so and you can see all of it together, well, you can't really, anyway it's Sugar and Spice Textiles it's the Christmas Birdie Bunting pa pa Pattern? Panel. Christmas Birdie Bunting Panel. Jesus, try saying that five times faster. Christmas Birdie Bunting Panel. Christmas Birdie Bunting Panel. That could go very wrong in a very bad way. <laughs> um, so, I... have been doing it. And I've been teaching myself how to sew. Aren't the birdies so cute? Little birds. Stars. And my mother-in-law, my lovely mother-in-law, taught me how to um, thread my machine and wind my bobbins and load it all up. Um, but I did not really know, you know, how how to sew, like, in a straight line, you know, the pressure to use on the pedal. And so that's what I've been doing for this. 
I thought, well, seriously, how hard can bunting be? And it's really not. I've... But because some of these are white, they're white and then the other side's red, I decided I'll put some interfacing in between. Um, so I did that. And that has made it, you can't see. The red doesn't really show through. I think that's fine. Um, and it gives them a little bit more structural integrity also. I think it's really cute. I love it. Stars, more birds. And I was talking to my nan and she suggested instead of doing bias binding like the pattern suggests and the pattern like it's just one of these written on the actual bit of fabric it's got the fusible no sew method and a sewing method and I thought no I want the challenge um, so I'll do the sewing and it says at the end you can just use bias binding and then iron it down the center line it all up and sew it on um, but my nan said that maybe some tape would be like some cotton tape would be a bit more um, well, just stronger but it'd just be a bit stronger um, and it'd be a bit yeah it'd, it'd wear better as well so I think I'm gonna do that and see if there's like a nice cream colour because I think that would look nice with that and give it a sort of shabby chic look. So I'm really enjoying using my sewing machine. Ah, I started sewing. Um, and so this is my little, what has happened to my hair? It's very windy today, so I've got it all over one side so it can't go too far. Um, that's my template I just cut out um, so that I could do my... Uh, What's it called? The bit in the middle. The words escape me. <laughs> Interfacing. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Okay, it's going to be one of those podcasts. So that's that whip. I'm really enjoying that. And I suppose, considering I've spent so much time doing this now, I could con consider this a whip. I have been berry oh no oh I just dropped it all on the floor <laughs> oh dear <laughs> I have been very busy these you might not be able to tell from there are actually swatches I do have to pick this up one sec Where did the other one go? Oh no. Okay, alright. I think I'm back. Oh my goodness me. Okay. So, I have been very, very busy doing some swatches for my Lottie and Albert rainbow blanket, which is going to be for the Canadian Crotchetters locale, where you have to make something representative of your area. My area is known as the Rainbow Region in New South Wales and um, so I thought that the Rainbow Blanket, the Lottie and Albert Rainbow Blanket would be just perfectly fitting and so I have been swatching all sorts of um, colourways for my rainbow blanket and the Lottie and Albert rainbow blanket is made with a 20mm crochet hook and six strands of DK weight yarn held together and so as you can see I went through a lot of different colour combinations before I arrived at what I wanted
and there's still more. I just even more, more rainbow ones, rain rainbowy again, super bright. That one's a bit darker. There's that one, and a pink one. And so, there's all the swatches. Finally, they can go elsewhere. They are crowding. Oh my goodness me. Um, and so, this was the one I finally chose. I really love how bright and cheerful it is. And I think it's going to look great. Just as I'm just going to do a lapgan size because when you buy the pattern, you get all of the different sizes. The pattern was like $9 Australian, but you get all of these different sizes for um, cushions. From a small cushion to a large cushion, you could do like a floor cushion. And then there is one, two, three, four, really? Four. There are five blanket sizes. Lindsay Nunes, who wrote this, has provided instructions on how to prepare the giant yarn ball. And then there is a whole beginner's tutorial on how to do a half double crochet, half triple crochet. Um, and it's a full on photo tutorial on how to actually do that stitch. And then there's the pattern. How to do the cushion, how to put it together, how to do the blanket. And it is probably about 10 pages. So I think that's really worth it. I do love that. It's really cute. And it's got these pom poms that I can't wait to make. So I'm going to do the lapgan size and that's going to go on my couch for when I'm just a little bit cold and it's going to be wonderful. And that is the colourway that I have chosen for my lapgan to go on my couch. This is my little ball. Now I've got another ball that I did wind up but it's over there and I've created an obstacle around myself so I can't get up. <laughs> um, I have one that is twice the size of this and this one is almost as big as my face. It's very windy here. There's been a tropical cyclone hanging off the coast of the east coast of Australia so we've been getting lots and lots of wind. Um, I really love this in a ball. If that was edible, I think I, yeah, I would eat that. I like those colours. I want to eat those colours. I do. So that's going to be my lap gown. And then I thought I could just use the same pattern and make a scarf and put pom-poms on the end. And that is what I'm going to do with this. And I absolutely love this. And I think it suits me. I love this. I love this so much. Um, I love light pink. I think it suits me to wear. Oh yeah, because I am wearing light pink. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I can't get wait. I can't get wait to get started. I can't wait to get started. I did also find one other um, possibility, and that was what has gone on over here. Um, there's a giant mess in my craft room. <coughs> there are about 300 books right in front of me, so it was really hard to move them. <laughs> I discovered this from holding two strands of t-shirt yarn together. And I quite like it. I quite like the effect of that. Now that yellow is coming through a lot more vivid currently 
and I don't think it really is that vivid and so hopefully on a regular monitor or on your computers it will not be that vivid but that is like a baby pink and a baby yellow really pastel-y but you know what this really reminded me of is in the UK you can get a suite called a flump and a flump is like a long marshmallow in a little packet and it's twisted around itself in a spiral and that just reminded me of a flump so much now I don't actually remember if they are pink and white or if flumps are pink and yellow but this reminded me of it nonetheless so I think I might go ahead I'm tempted to see how that will turn out as a cushion cover um, but I'm wanting the ridges of the pattern to stand out and if they do then I might go ahead and make that into a cushion cover and then that would also be really good for the locale because being originally from the UK um, I suppose basing something basing my pattern off of a national suite that you can purchase could be considered uh, applicable to that crochet along. So did that make any sense? I feel like that was really, <laughs> I hope it did. Um, so uh, yeah, that is possibly going to be my flump cushion. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. So I'll just pop these over here. Oh, my voice is going croaky. I'll just need to have a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope my hair looks okay and that I don't look like some sort of scarecrow. Sometimes it does that. I think I've pushed the camera back with everything that I'm putting on top of it. <clears throat> okay. Next work in progress. This is not... I'm going to end up frogging this because, seriously, this was not fun. This... Oh, now, do I have the book? Where did I put it? Oh, where did it go? It was right here. Oh, it's back there. Oh, I think I could go and get it. Okay. This is the base for a crocheted bag from a book called 35 Crocheted Books. And it was to use t-shirt yarn using a 10 millimeter hook and it took me ages this probably took me about two hours just to get this far it was so painful I had to stop in the end it was just too much it really really hurt and so I just thought to myself the t-shirt yarn she uses in the book must be a bit smaller and so it's easier to pass it through because this is really stiff this would make a fantastic basket if you carried on with it but I don't know how people are making baskets out of t-shirt yarn and having decent hand and arm health because but yeah like I say this took me two hours to make it was not quick and it was so difficult to get the yarn um, to get the hook through the yarn that it really really hurt and it was so stubborn to work with, it took all of the joy out of it. <laughs> I mean, I was quite determined to try and make it work, which is why I got this far, I think. But um, ultimately, I just, I don't know how people are doing all of these t-shirt yarn projects. Like, I held this double with a 20mm hook and it was so easy. It was really good. But the ones, oh, everything just fell off again. The ones that you see on like Pinterest are all like they look quite tight and together. Um, you know, like the gauge looks really tight. So I don't know how people are doing. What What do you think? Like, 
is does that happen to you when you use t-shirt yarn does it really hurt um what's your technique um so that it doesn't hurt I don't know what to do that and what to do about that and so that was supposed to be a bag for my dad it's going to be a gym bag um but that hurt <laughs> I can't do that um I don't I think I will knock something over if I get up from here and get the book which is <laughs> On the other side of the room, I think I will knock something over. I'm knocking things over. And things are falling off of their own volition. <laughs> I don't think I need to add to that. Okay. I'm really paranoid about my hair. Bit strange. Okay. So. Um. Oh, I'm loving that. I can't wait to be making the pom poms for that. So that's going to be really fun. I think that's all of my works in progress to show you at this time. My finished object is my waking window shawl. And yes, there are ends everywhere. But I absolutely love it. It is so pretty. And I figured out how I would wear it. I have it quite far up. And obviously I wouldn't leave my hair tucked in, but it is, it's clipped up at the moment, so I won't fiddle around with it too much. And something like that, I think I would do. Uh, maybe I would tuck some more of that away because there's quite a bit of the pink and have that showing like that but I really love it so all I've got to do is tuck in the ends and then that is um, ready to be worn in the coming months so it's about to be trailing off of summer in um, Australia so at least in this part anyway and it will it has started to get cooler already which has been delightful it's been really nice it's been raining and there's been clouds and it's just been so so nice um, okay so that can go there so that is whips and finished objects. I now have such a ridiculous amount of books to share with you that I really should get started on it. Now, I made a purchase um, right after Christmas in January from worldofbooks.com and I basically I have decided that they are an online book op shop. That is essentially what they are. Each of these books only cost me about 10 to $12 Australian, which I think would be around about 5 to $7 American. I'm not sure on the conversion, but I know it's a lot. I think the Australian and Canadian dollar are quite similar. Um, and then the pound is just around, it's around about directly half. And it, yeah. So I think the pound and the American dollar are about the same. So, um, first of all, there's this one here. I got Glorious Crocheted Sweaters. And that is edited by Nola Thies. And I'm just going to show you, obviously you can see I've got heaps. But I'm, I've got so many, I'm just going to have to show you my favourite. I love. I love that. I love that so so much. I can't tell you. I really want to do that. Um, and there's one before it. Which is my other favourite in this one. And there's a child's version and a lady's version. 
I love that colour work. It is so gorgeous. Now, I can't remember if this is the book with the yellow sweater in it or not. No, I don't believe it is. So, I love that. I, oh, I love it. And there's more gorgeous colour work. I mean, this one would not be for me because it's just such a big cardigan. But look at that colour work. I especially like this part on the top. It's nice and clear. Um, but there's that same, actually, that's good because that's the front of that cardigan that I just showed you. She wears it well, suits her. <laughs> and I love that sweater. I really want to make that sweater. Um, okay, so that's Glorious Crocheted Sweaters by Nola Thess. Um, next, I have got Crocheted Gifts in a Weekend. And it's right on the front cover. My favourite one is, is in this whole book is this little pot holder. I just think it's adorable. I want two of them and I want to hang them up. Not necessarily to you, yes, I just want to have them. Um, I love, I think, all of the, um, here they are. Oh, I can't really show you in there because that's got the pattern in it. Um, what can I show you? That's a good pattern. That's a little set. And I think there's a hammock. Oh, but the pattern's all over the place, so I can't show you. Um, there was a really cute um, <laughs> set of ducks. <laughs> that you can make and I think they're adorable um, it's got some funny little chickens in the back as well um, and I wonder if there's a big enough picture oh my goodness me yeah these little chickens this boy is playing with are just adorable. I want to make those chickens! <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, and so that was Crocheted Gifts in a Weekend by, by Nola Thies again. That's Nola Thies. Um, next I've got a Treasury of Crocheted Sweaters by Sedgwood Press. And I like just about every design in this book, which makes it great value for money when you're only paying about 10 bucks. Um, I know that on, I think I'll have to tag Zach Stout from his podcast, um, The Stout Stitch. If you don't watch him, you absolutely should. He's fantastic. Um, he's just had a design out as well, a lovely diamond scarf. Um, I know that he was looking for some uh, crocheted sweaters for men. And he was saying that he couldn't really find any. Well, he might like to get this magazine, magazine this book, because it's got right in the back, it's got... Oh, can't hold it for you. I think that's a lovely men's sweater. And that's really nice. It's got these um, raised stitches on the front. Um, I think there was another one. Oh, there was a vest. It is unusual to see, it's not as usual to see men's designs as it is to see women's designs. So I think it would be really good to start seeing more men's designs. Um, I think that's the only men's designs 
in this one, but that was a nice jumper. Um, I am going to make myself a duffel coat that is in this um, because with just as, as luck would have it, this child's coat goes up to a size 14 years old, which matches my measurements. <laughs> Um, they were very, very generous back then. I think this is from the 80s for sure. Um, so they, they were very generous in their sizes. Um, so I am going to be able to make it for myself, which I'm very pleased with. And I've got, um, I've got the toggles as well for it already. Um, there are some that are extremely questionable, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I yep that's what I'm going to say I don't know what else to say <laughs> um, oh my god there's so many in here and I just about love all of them I thought this was a really lovely vest. Oh, I quite like that jacket also. Alright, so I'll move on to the next book now. We've got the crochet sweater book by Sylvia Koch. She was a really big designer. Really, really big designer. She did a lot of work with, um, is it James Walters? Yeah, James Walters. Um, and this is another one again where the sizes are so generous. I am going to be able... Where is a picture for me to be able to show you? <laughs> this... I am going to be able to fit into that jumper in the largest child size. Um, the largest child size is is often I'm finding uh, like about only two inches smaller than the small size in for the for the women's measurements. Um, with the smallest size for the women's measurements, for instance. The smallest size for this one is the, is a thirty six inch vest. They've got some lovely colour work in this one. I really like that. I want that. I want the high waisted pants as well. I want that. <laughs> Um, they've got these gorgeous little rainbow jumpers for kids. Yeah, and again, if there was one more size in that, it would fit me. <laughs> That, like they're, and you can see they're super generous. They're really bulky on those kids. Um, so that's it's not surprising. Um, oh, there's the pop, the poppy jumper. I really liked the poppy pullover. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love the poppy pullover. That's really gorgeous. I love it. And even though that one, like that's designed to, that's I think that looks really nice, big. Um, it's supposed to be very like a rectangular and the actual chest on that is 52 inches um, and you can see from the way that she's like it's really broad on her but I think that's it really suits it it's a really well designed garment I want it so that's that one that was 
um, the Crochet Sweater Book by Sylvia Kosh. Uh, next I've got crocheted and stitched jewellery and there's just a few in this one that I will show because I really like them. This is the crocheted discs necklace and I really, really like that one. I'm actually going to do that one and put it into the North Coast National Show as well. There's a jewellery section that I thought I may as well do. Um, they've got some raffia crocheted flowers but I really liked... There's a whole set um, in this design. There's the necklace. It's embroidered. Um, so that's the necklace. And then there's the bracelet. I think they look like lollies or sweets. And then a keychain. So I really liked that. There's others in there that I do like, um, but those are the ones that I like the best. And so that is Crocheted and Stitched Jewellery by Emmy Iwakiri, or Emmy Iwakiri, Iwakiri, that sounds more convincing, doesn't it? Um, then we've got Crochet Fashion. Or fashion, fashion crochet, I'm reading it upside down, by Jean Kimond. Oh, Kinmond, by Jean Kinmond. And I really got it for the, for the design on the front, to be honest. I thought even if that was done in one colour, I bet that's a really gorgeous garment. Um, this is another one that has men's patterns in it. Um, that's a nice basic sweater. I think that's a really nice one. Um, and some bit of more of a textured stitch. Just those two. Um, I really liked that blouse. I think that's really pretty. And yeah, as I say, um, the pattern from the front cover, I really like that. It's got lots of children's patterns in there as well. And they're all quite fashionable and I think they'd be easily altered. Um, the next book I have, I think that's all of my order from theworldofbooks.com. Um, as I say, they were only about like anywhere between $9 and $12, I think, really, um, Australian. So I think it's really worth it. Um, and as well, actually, I think it's free shipping if you're in Australia. So that's pretty good. Um, this next book I found recently at the op shop for one dollar and it's Make a Monster. I was so happy when I found this book. It's brand new. I'm sure of it. And here's an example of the monsters. How cool is Monty? I really want one. Um, then I want that one. How cute is he? He's like a little star. I want a star monster. Um, and so they're all made out of um, fleece, which I think is really cool. And then there's this little guy, Rufus. And so they're all really cute monsters. And that is Make a Monster by Fiona Gobble. <laughs> Gobble? Fiona Gobble. <laughs> Um, and now this patchwork magazine I really got because it was so informational I was yeah I, I just flipped through it and I found that I really only liked this pattern 
that's okay. The other patterns can be changed as well. But to be fair, I did like this one. It's called the Tumbling Blocks Patchwork. Um, I think that's really, really pretty. And I'm very interested in doing some English paper piecing. Um, so I thought getting one of these would be really handy. Um, and it's got so much information in there. I really, really enjoyed it. So... I think that was really worth it. That was like a dollar as well. Then, I got this one because there's a candle wicking section in the North Coast National and I thought I could possibly try to do some candle wicking. This was also a dollar and I can't find the page marker. Here are some examples. I don't know how well you're going to see these pictures. Oh, that comes out not too badly. There's a lovely quilt, but I would like to do... Oh, I don't know if you can see those hearts. The hearts at the top. I think that's really cute. And when I opened the book, this fell out. And it's someone's um, little sample of candle wicking. And so it sort of looks like French knots. And on the back, it's just like, um, it looks like running stitch or like back stitch. So it was good to have that little example. Um, so thank you, whoever left your work in there. And so that's Candle Wicking by Alma Schwab. And that was a dollar. I found this crochet mesh book again for one dollar um, so I decided to grab that and I loved that bedspread pattern with that tree on it but I don't think I would do a whole bedspread bed spread in that gauge because that's that would take a phenomenal amount of time but I really like the tree I would possibly make a curtain or something smaller like a table center or mat. I think that would be the thing. And I'm just seeing here that they have a cross stitch book as well that I'm going to have to see if I can find. Um, the same company does floral embroidery book. Again, this was a dollar, and it's got some quite involved designs. And then I really liked this one with the little bird. So smaller designs, a bit more achievable. And then, for instance, when you get to the ones on the front few pages, they're quite small. Quite like that one, it's quite folksy. It's all very sweet. So I would like to do some embroidery. I like these designs. I like the boot with the tulips. It's so cute. And the little tree is really sweet. A basket of flowers. The wow. house. They're all really folksy, I like how that's cute. So I'd like to do those at some point. I don't know when I'm going to do all of this. I have an A to Z of ribbon embroidery. That was a dollar. And that's exactly what it says on the tin, really. If I ever want to look at ribbon embroidery, I've got a whole um, stitch dictionary telling me exactly how to do each and every stitch for ribbon embroidery. Um, this next one was more of, oh sorry, and that was by Inspirations Books. Oh, so Inspirations is a magazine, isn't it? It's an embroidery magazine. So that's their collection of books. Um, this one is a bit more of an inspirational book. It's got beautiful pictures in here. Um, of spaces and interior design, that type of thing. 
that you can look at and just be wowed with just a super country I like that type of thing and rooms full of fabrics and cushions and I love it so I thought that was quite nice and I got another book in the series the inspiration series, the needlepoint one, and as you can see it's going to have all of these stitches so that you can see. And I know that in the um, the latest issue that we got here in Australia of Molly Makes magazine, um, I think it was issue 100, so it was still a Christmas one, and there was a blue needlepoint clutch purse in there, and so that was needlepoint. So um, it just goes to show you can do some super modern things with needlepoint which I hadn't really thought of before so I thought it'd be nice to have a little go again I don't know when I'm going to do all of this but it's nice to have the tools um, this is another book from um, that is a bit more you know inspirational flea market style by Jerry oh. Farris and Tim Himsel and you know, it's got it's a it's a bit more of a DIY book. So it's like how to make a blackboard yourself. Um, at the front, it's got like I really like that. That's like how to make a garden um, shelf, like a potting shelf. It's got how to um, like fix chairs. All things that you find from the flea market really um, and it's just it's very inspirational with the lovely pictures and I like that type of thing um, you know like making lampshades through teacups like that um, I like the picture on the front with the embroidery I think that's really pretty um, so it's one of those um, books that you can get to spark interest, um, spark ideas. Coffee table book, I guess, is what I'm saying. And so then there's a few magazines. This is the inspirations book that I was uh, magazine that I was talking about before. And so you can get um, all sorts in here. It's a really good magazine. I think it's Australian. I'm not sure. Um, but I got this one for its um, beautiful embroidery, uh, embroidered Christmas decorations. There's a wreath of cherries, a little snowflake one, a little tree, and is that a poinsettia? Maybe. Um, there's also strawberries, which I really like. Um, there's also a couple of lovely, more involved projects in here. This little box is so gorgeous. It's the Woodland Needlework box. Oh, I love that. How sweet is that? I would love that. Um, and then there's a bag at the front, I think. Yes, here it is. It is. Look how sweet this thing is, seriously. It is the bobbin tree pattern. It is so cute. I will flip to a closer image. There it is. How sweet is that embroidery? It is so cute. And so that's that goes on the bag and then There's a little wheelbarrow to go on it, the haberdashery. There's also a little project case with bobbins all on it. Oh my god, it's so adorable. And I was reminded in this um, magazine 
here of a book called Modern Folk Embroidery, which looks spectacular. I don't know if you can see it. So I want to have a look at that book as well. So, then, vintage quilts. I really like... I'm a huge fan of the Dresden plate. I really like it. I think it's super pretty. Now I can't find it. Um, and this sort of reminds me of that. This is the Blessings quilt. I think that's so gorgeous. Um, there's a few in here that I liked. That one's lovely. Tribute to Gilly's friend. I mean, it's a bit busy. I think I would um, make the colours more cohesive, to be honest. But, you know, that's what you that's what you would do, isn't it? You just make it so that you like it more. Um, it's a starry quilt. Really like that. And so this is inspired by vintage quilts number one from Universal Magazines. really and it's got all of the pattern pieces in the back as well so that's always a good thing to check to look out for if you're going to buy things from the op shop from the thrift store does it have its pattern book in there as well this one very simple looking book fine hand quilting is the most informational book i think i might have ever seen it is it was obviously produced on somewhat of a budget it is black and white photos all the way through and okay so we just got a little bit cut off there um my camera cuts off at like 45 minutes and i just don't know why um i guess it's not it doesn't store any more than that maybe it's the size of my memory card i think that's what i've always said in like every other podcast so sorry about that <clears throat> my camera cut off I think I was completely done with showing you this enormal, enormous stash of books. I am now moving on to make a plans and shout outs. So, um, I think I will do some make a plans first. My, where's my other book? Got it. Okay, so I've got a million and one make plans because I've got the North Coast National coming up. I've got birthdays. Every why is everyone born at the same time? I just and they all want birthday presents. I don't know about this. <laughs> so I've got some. I th I've got some designs that I would like to make that are not getting done because there's all these other things happening that I also want to take part in. So my make plans. Do you like my little page in my, I don't know, it's a bullet journal, but, um, so I've got my Make 9, it's a journal, you know, and then I've got my Maker Plans over here, I've stuck a little flower down and some dotty paper, and it's kind of cute, and I've got some Maker Plans happening. My Maker Plans are this cross stitch pattern wherever it has gone. It is called What Does Not Kill Me Gives Me XP <laughs> because I play Dungeons and Dragons. I think Valerie from Old Soul Crochet also plays Dungeons and Dragons. I had her mentioning it on one of her podcasts. And so this is the pattern. Of course it's a play on words from What Does Not Kill Me Makes Me Stronger. And in this case, when you play the game, if it doesn't kill you, it gives you experience points. This is a dice that you use to play the game with, known as a d20 because it is a 20-sided dice. So I cannot wait to start getting um, that underway. It's a bit geeky and I love it ever so much. Not only is it needle nerdy, but it's d and nerdy, and I love that. <laughs> Double nerd point. <laughs> um, I do have another make a plan from this book, and I may as well um, show you the 
yarn for it because it was here accidentally. I was going to show it to you next time, but it actually came in the same package as my giant crochet hook that I have been using for my Lottie and Albert rainbow blanket attempts. Um, this is Mondial Biosoft 100% organic cotton and it's in this beautiful lemon, uh, it's not lemon yellow, is it lemon yellow? Oh, it's pastel yellow. Oh, and there's a black dot on it. Got off black dot. Um, isn't it beautiful? That is coming up exactly true on screen. I love that. It is so soft. It is so, so soft. I can't wait to have this. All made up into a top. So I got five of those. And it is for the Montgomery tank. I really want it. I don't think I'm going to make it quite as long. I will probably cut out a few of these straight rows here, like non-increased rows, and move the design up. I like it when um, the end of a garment falls on my hips, which would be about here. Um, I love that top. I really want it. And I've got the perfect yarn for it, right? Super cute. So that is a makeup plan that is going to be happening. I can't wait. So I really want to do that. Um, Clarissa Beth from Crochet Cakes is having a vintage make along. Maybe it's just a crochet along. Um, it says, yeah, crochet along. I found this pattern. It's definitely vintage. I wrote the date on the back. It is from the Leader paper in Melbourne. And it, this was released on Saturday the 19th of September, 1903. It is for the skirt. And the pattern, I will just read <laughs> the little blurb that is above it and I got this from Trove which is a newspaper search engine for old newspapers and it says crochet petticoat I don't know if you can see that um, this is a very useful design as the directions will serve for any size petticoat our model is worked with white peacock two ply vest wool with a rather fine bone hook and is a really elegant garment. About 10 ounces of this wool would be required for a full size petticoat, but any other wool and a suitable hook may be used, always bearing in mind to take up both threads and not to work too loosely. Um, it's made from the side, so you work the length and then you do short rows. Um, so that's really good. That means I can alter the length because I don't like that length. Um, I'm looking for something slightly above my knee and I would like to try out short rows. So I'm really looking forward to getting that started. And I think I've got some cotton back there that I would like to do that in. So I cannot wait. I'm very excited about that one. Um, The wonderful Rosina from the Zines and Roger podcast sent me this. Oh. I love it. I love it so much. I want it all. I love all the colours. Actually, these colours are very similar to the colours that I have chosen. And that, aren't they? Um, so, the Vintage Autumn Collection um, is a hat, gloves and scarf set. And I, I was sent this as a thank you for um, completing the test pattern of the Waking Winter Shawl, which still needs to have its ends tucked in. And then as soon as it does, it's going to get a light blocking because it's already pretty big. I don't want to stretch it too much. Um, just to make it nice and straight would be good. And then I'm going to, um, so yeah, I'll block that out and then I'll post some, I'll post a project on Ravelry for that and um, some notes and stuff like that. Um, there'll be pictures, so that'll be good. Um, 
so I'm looking forward to starting that one and that one's going to end up being the third of her patterns that I will have worked <laughs> um, and then this one has been looking at me look at that blouse that has been absolutely looking at me it was called the In Popcorn Stitch Blouse and it's got, they're like little tree shapes which I just love and I think it would be brilliant for autumn winter with the little collar poking out over a jumper It'd be so cute I want it and I want to wear it with a high waisted skirt like she is um, what a great outfit I love it and this would also actually be really good to go into the um, vintage crochet along as well except that's probably done with about a 1.5 millimeter hook and I'll never do both things in time um, so that is some makeup plans I wonder have I got any more on here the rainbow blanket yeah that's sort of already a whip now That's really about it for now that I will show you. I, of course, do have more makeup plans than that. I've got my North Coast National Projects. I've got my list all set up. Look, it's just got a few little holes here and there where you can see I've got things penciled in where I'm not quite sure. Um, And I think I will share all of my North Coast National projects with you next time. So that is something that we can look forward to together in episode 8. Um, for now though, what I might do is go straight ahead into some shout outs and a big fat thank you. So, first of all, I've got quite a few. Um, shout outs to make and I do I watch all of these people these wonderful people and I love them all um, I think everybody on this list is under a thousand subscribers and I think they all deserve such a huge um, shout out because they're all fabulous um, there is okay to begin with <laughs> Caroline from the Mind and Muse Crafts podcast Sam from Sam Squeaks Leela from Miss Leela Makes podcast, um, Angela Crochet's Art, and that's Angela, uh, Hayley from Hayley Mailey, oh my goodness she's so cute, I love her, um, Amanda from Undercover Yarn Snob, um, Laurie from the Laurie Lulu Crochet podcast, Amber from Ua Crochet, Linda from Joey Scarf, Ruth from Pink Pumpkin, Nicole from NSP Designs, Angelia from Little Zinnia Patch, Ellie from Elliness Crafts, Anna from Straub's Design, Valerie from Old Cro Soul Crochet. <laughs> Kayla from Kayla Crochet Love, Dot from Nitty Dotty, Gypsy from Gypsy Rose, and Katrina from Katrina Chadwick. And last but certainly not least is Amy from the wonderful Bruticus Yarns podcast. I think that you should all run off straight away and go and subscribe to them all. I think they are all fantastic. I click on all of their links every time they pop up in my notifications. And I look forward to each and every one of their episodes. Um, my next thing to say is a big fat thank you to Gypsy from the Gypsy Rose podcast. She gave me such a wonderful shout out and I was just really blown away. So Gypsy, thank you so much. You said such kind words and I really appreciate it. Um, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just a bit blown away and that was just really beautiful of you. So thank you very much. Um, I have just realised that I'm looking straight at 
these two big wound up balls of my six strands of yarn the, uh, did I show you these? Oh, I think I did show you this one. Did I show you this one? This is the one that's going to be my scarf. I can't wait. I'm really excited about that. And that one is going to be on my couch as a little cover. I don't know if it's going to be enough. What do you think? I don't know if it's going to be enough. Might end up being a cushion. Because it's not that much bigger than that. Um, so I'm really happy about that. I'm so super excited about all of the projects that I'm doing and I'm really excited about ticking some things off in February yarn bingo. How exciting is this thing? This is being run by Llama Mama, Kayla, and on Facebook her group is the yarn bingo group. And as you get, as how you play is as you get these things, you just tick them off and you need to take photographs and post them onto the uh, Yarn Bingo Facebook group. So I've definitely got lots of pictures to be taking. Um, I finished my Waking Winter shawls, that's going to be Finish a Whip. I just need to choose which one I want it to be because where would, in terms of what is it next to, um, that would be... Um, a little bit more beneficial for me you know like maybe this one is finish a whip and then right next to it it's create a project that contains red yarn or maybe I could do that one because that's got red in it um, so I don't think I'm gonna get bingo because it's almost the end of February but I can give it a go <laughs> but it's a bit of fun isn't it I need to get a bingo dabber now that'll be fun um, so, thank you so much everybody for watching. That just about concludes episode 7 of the, cro of the crochet, of the Crafty Poppet Crochet Podcast. Um, if you have enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell for notifications for the next episode. I will be doing... A monster stash acquisitions episode for episode 8 so be sure to stay tuned for episode 8 and you will be able to see all the crafty op shop glory that is the crafty poppet it's ridiculous I'm looking at at least five tote bags full of yarn that need to be shown that want to be shown on this podcast stay tuned for episode 8 folks until then stay crafty and thanks again for watching bye